So um, welcome everybody to the first um, of a very long and inspiring series of video interviews with um, different people and projects in the area of digital humanities. We're starting today with Lena. Hi, I'm Lena. Lena is a bachelor student of the Bachelor of Digital Humanities at the University of Leipzig. And she also has already a bachelor degree in um, Roman languages. Participated in the Code Camp in Leipzig and is currently working as a front end developer and also writing her bachelor thesis. Lena, you can present yourself now and tell us a bit about you <laughs> and your project. Yeah, I studied Roman languages because I was really interested in literature and different languages. And um, I always had in mind that I wanted to study informatics because I also always loved math and I was really bad in languages. I'm super interested in your bachelor thesis, but I think it's also very interesting to hear why you decided to study um, digital humanities and also what's your opinion about digital humanities at the University of Leipzig. So maybe we go a bit chronological. It was more like a layover because my plan was to be like this informatic person and then the study program was super new in Leipzig. So I just wanted to try it out for maybe a year or two before I go to Berlin. Um, yeah, but then I stayed and I realized that this is probably more something that I'm more interested in or that is more fitting for me. You are one of my friends, first friends that studied digital humanities. For me, like coming from sociology, having a degree in, in social science is something complete new. And I actually never could imagine what you're doing in your studies. Like I had always those ideas, <laughs> but I find it super interesting to hear from you what is what is actually going on in that field. So go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I started studying digital humanities in Leipzig and to like, give a small frame, um, digital humanities is like this interdisciplinary study program where you um, have some courses from social science, but also some courses in um, from computer science and then this digital humanities study program has these interdisciplinary courses where they teach you tools um, that you can use for social studies. And in Leipzig, it's very focused on uh, language processing because um, in Leipzig there is already in this computer science in institute, there's like a branch that is focused on language, mature language processing. Right now, like it's, getting more modern with also some um, our like head of institute being more interested in Shakespeare. So we're going to the English language through this concept of digital humanities. I feel like it's really new still. And I think you have to consider this when you start studying, not all the curriculums are so well thought through and I was actually missing more. We had some really nice courses like citizen science. And um, there was like a um, course where we, we did analyze movie scripts and um, which, was, which could be like more into the pop culture, like combination with pop culture. What I was missing was a bit this social approach maybe or this ethical approach um which is what i'm writing my thesis about <laughs> yeah i'm writing my thesis about biases and algorithms and um algorithmic decision making systems and these systems can discriminate or can be discriminating. They are used already in Germany for public decision making. Some and with the digitalization that is happening currently in Germany, um, the government is yeah has to think about what guidelines 
um, they will follow and I'm analyzing how the German government is preparing for this and what laws exist. This comes from the perspective of, um, I believe that, or not, I believe a lot of people believe, and I read this and I'm writing this down, um, that computer science and in general IT has a diversity problem. And we see this in a lot of cases where algorithmic decision-making systems um, make decision that um, damage that can be damaging to some people. And this can be discriminating to a whole group of people and this affects in a lot of cases, marginalized groups. For example, from Joy Bulamwini, who is like a researcher, was a researcher at MIT and um, worked with robots. And she was not recognized because she's dark skinned and she had could just use a white sheet of paper and she was recognized. And this robot is using a facial recognition camera that is used in a lot of, um, a hardware like in, in laptops and phones and stuff so it will not recognize your face um if you are not a white person or like misrecognize it or misidentify it and we have structural racism this is represented in the data and if a, in, if an algorithm is trained with data it will definitely re uh, def not definitely but it will probably it will definitely reproduce. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a bit more complicated and then you could get really technical how this works. But on the one hand, like you have data and data can never represent the whole reality. It will always just be one dimension. And this, um, this should be always remembered that these algorithms, even if like you talk about technical, like mathematical, logical decisions, and that they are better than sometimes more unbiased than humans. Of course they are not because they are based on human decision-making in the past and, um, they should always be questioned and they should, it should. And I think this is like the, there's like a few points that are major in my thesis is like, wh what topic should these systems decide or not like sometimes it should also be discussed some decisions should maybe not made, just made by machines and um another point would be that yeah what you said we want to shape we can shape the future, for, but for that we need education in universities, education in public offices, that they news, know how to use these tools. I want to quick add something because I had an interview with my colleague yeah. um, last week where he said, and I found that it fits perfectly to what you're saying, that um, digital, commu uh, digital communities, digital technologies are representing the cultures we're living in and from where they were developed but they're also bringing new cultural, social, and ideological changes. And that in order to know the present you're living in right now, you have to know the past. You have to understand where you're coming from, either on the individual level, but also as a society. You have to understand that colonialism, that slavery is a huge part of society. You have to understand how capitalism was formed and how it's working and how it's changing. Discrimination and leaving people out and this white, this male focus and everything. That's the culture we're coming from. And that's the culture where technologies and changes are developed from. And now we're having a chance to actually build something new from that and to be like, okay, we've already been there and it's coming from there. And now we can like go a different road and change that. And that's something where we should be which could be like a super positive perspective. And I think it's amazing to see it that way. And that's why more people should study the digital humanities and do code camps that come from completely different backgrounds. 
let's imagine you are the queen of digital humanities and you can shape its future what would you do i would of course include way much more pop culture and i think that would be a really great approach because then it would get more into pop culture and to like people would be more interested and have fun, more fun with it and yeah that would maybe i would ah what i would do <laughs> i i would definitely i think just like try to make it for everyone and to think of everyone include everyone in the, the creation process in the in the how we define digital humanities new or how we define it for everybody how do we find a place for everybody in this and um what do we develop that everybody is interested in and needs and i think yeah and pop culture <laughs> nice Okay, and then my last question would be, um, yeah, what what are your next steps? What is your future planning? What, what, I don't know, like, of course, not only focusing on career, but what, where do you want to go with what you're having right now? So, um, my two year plan maybe is or like three year plan is finishing my bachelor thesis, then starting a master and also in digital humanities, maybe getting more like, deeper into my topic. I always dream of an academic career, but I don't think that it would be the right thing for me. Oh, I'm not sure. Um, I think I would love to build a community here in Leipzig for all the women that code. <laughs> And um, so far, there's like already so many amazing organizations. And I think I would like to, like, I attended some conferences online, but I never interacted with the people because I didn't have the time and the capacity. And I would actually really like to include myself more into this women who called and everything. And I like, just like, communicate with these people because they are so amazing and inspiring and um yeah i would just like love to interact with them and that's my plan or my goal for the year that i set myself and um in general i i don't know i'm like my goal is to be there for everybody who thinks about going into this field and talking to them and ensuring them that it's going to be okay and fun and fine and um, also trying to shape this industry so it's going to be fine for the people so but right now i'm just trying to become a really good coder i want to create spaces i guess for, for people of this kind of community that this builds because you will, if you have work in a nice environment, you will always talk to different people and work with different people. And I think, yeah, it's what people don't, maybe don't think of when they think of programming as being super social. And maybe I want to create spaces where this is even more possible. And, but I think it's already the reality in some cases. Um, but yeah. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lena. Thank you for participating, for being the first one, um, for sharing, for um, also um, yeah, introducing a world to me where I always felt I don't fit in. And but now I feel like I want to be part of that because I think it's so empowering and so important. And yeah, I'm so happy that we got to talk. Thank you so much for having me and for inviting me and for listening to my opinions on this topic. Thank you. <laughs>
Bye bye.